Hey guys, thanks for joining me in today's episode. Today we're doing a little garden update on my lower maintenance garden where my squashes and my corn and whatnot are. Let me show you a video quick of what the garden looked like before I got it all planted, right after it was rototilled on the rototilling video. Alright, this is the garden you guys saw me rototilling on an earlier video. I used the bucket loader on the tractor to make my mounds for my squashes. Alright, now that you have an idea of what it looked like before, let me show you what we've done here. So what I've been doing is taking these tendrils from all of the squash plants and training them to grow around the mounds. That's going to leave me this nice wide walkway uh, up and down and in between each of the plants. Keeps them separated, keeps them from cross-pollinating, but most of all it makes it easier to maintain and easier to weed. That way I'm not stepping on my plants. And then as we walk down over this way, I have spaghetti squash started from seed there. Over here I have my acorn squash, in here I have my butternut squash, and this big mound over here is where my spaghetti squash is. Let me show you these spaghetti squash. So as you can see from the size of these plants, these plants are doing wonderful in these big mounds of dirt. A lot of these leaves are larger than my whole hand here. As you can see it's just healthy, I guess you could say is the best word to describe these. It's very healthy and they're coming along great. This here is a spaghetti squash. I have a couple of nice sized squash in here already that are already a good sized fruit here. Uh, they're not ripe, so we're gonna leave them until they are ripe. But I am happy so far with the progress that this garden has made. Now here's my corn. This has been a little bit of a conundrum for me this year. And this is actually my third planting of corn. It was roughly 1,500 to 1,700 seeds, and something came and ate every single seed. I literally had nothing left. Every place that I put a seed, there was a hole. So, with that being said, I uh, decided to try some transplant corn that I had. So I put two dozen ears of transplant corn in right down here, and they're not doing well at all. However, I had something, of course, came in and pulled up my transplant corn two days after <laughs> two days after I went and planted it which made, made me not very happy so I put it back in the ground because it was only pulled up, it wasn't damaged and I came back and checked it again two days later it was pulled up again so I kind of threw my hands up at that point and said ah forget it well then I decided I really wanted to have some corn for my freezer so I decided to try something else I put the corn back in these four rows and then I put bird net over the first two. However, I ended up with all the corn coming up and nothing being ate. So it had to be something here. I don't know what. But I had I ended up having to put bird net over the first two rows of corn here on the right. And then I pulled it up once the corn started getting mature so that it didn't get grown into the ground and I can use it again next year. So there's my corn. I got four rows, 150 foot long, right there. So this behind me here is my pumpkin patch. Uh, I have five mounds, each mound has three plants in it, and some were planted from seedlings, some were planted from seeds. But both the seedlings and the seeds seem to be, seem to be doing just fine. Now the pumpkin patch here, I found myself a start of a little pumpkin. Now these are the, sh these pumpkins here are the uh, pumpkin pie pumpkins. They don't get real big, but there it is, right there. So, it's the beginnings of my first pumpkin growing on these vines here. So, some people were quite skeptical about my huge mounds I made for my squash here. Let me give you my mental contemplation thought as to why I decided to make such large mounds. After I really tilled the ground, I could have just raked up these little itty bitty mounds and planted the seeds in them. However, with the larger mounds of loose soil, it's going to be able to root deeper into these mounds. These mounds are roughly two, two and a half feet tall. so. That's going to give it two to two and a half feet of loose soil that these plants can go and root into and put down bigger roots. And as you can see, some of these plants are absolutely huge. I mean, look at the size of some of these plants. They're bigger than both my hands put together. That's pretty good size, man. So, I can't say as though it's better than conventional ways, but for me, it seems to be working quite well. So anyway, guys. Thanks for watching today's little update episode, and I appreciate you being here with me. I hope to see you again soon on my next episode. <laughs> Bye.